In yesterday's video, we took a look at one of these Ryzen 5 3600 CPUs that was sent in, and it actually ended up being faulty with its out of the box default clock speeds. And when we dropped the speeds down on this CPU, it ended up actually working fine. However, in order to do that before the whole computer froze, I had to disable four of the six cores and then work my way back from there. If you guys want to check out more on how we fix this Ryzen 5 3600 in particular, then I will refer you to yesterday's video, the Can Yes Fix It episode. However, we've also got another Ryzen 5 3600 here, and you may be wondering why are Ryzen 5 3600s and also other Ryzen CPUs starting to fail more coming into 2023? Well, today we're gonna to get to the bottom of it where when I was doing this gaming PC, I actually noticed a bit of an anomaly, and that was when we were playing Death Stranding, the CPU temperatures were actually quite high. And even here in the menu, we can see the CPU is going up to 70 degrees, but I do remember it hitting around 80 degrees, and that's unusually high when you're playing games. In fact, 80 degrees on a Ryzen 5 3600, you should really only be getting that while you're doing say 100% CPU usage workloads in a program like Cinebench R23, for example. But let's quickly check out the problem here, change over a cooler to say from the Wraith Stealth to a Wraith Prism, and then we'll get back and do a little bit more investigating with this CPU. If you want to get yourself a cheap, legit Windows 10 Pro Key license, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $15, when you use that coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows activated right now. Links in the description below. So after we started playing Death Stranding, the CPU went up to over 90 degrees, and that's in a game. So whatever's going on here, the Wraith Stealth either isn't doing its job properly or this CPU is just simply being way too uh, aggressive in terms of its voltages and clock speeds out of the box. And the surprising thing is this is on an A320 motherboard, which has no support for overclocking. So we're going to get to the bottom of this by running a quick Cinebench R23 score right now and just see uh, what speeds and temperatures we can get up to here. But so this is going close to 95 degrees on the node. You can hear the fan is spinning up really loud, but we're going to change over now to the Wraith Prism and just see what temperatures that gives out and also see how this wattage right here behaves when we switch the cooler. So we've now switched out the Wraith Stealth for the Wraith Spire and we've done some testing here, both on Cinebench and Death Stranding. Now, the good news is, is when we're playing Death Stranding, the temperatures only max out at now 74 degrees, so they're not going into that 90 degree region. But when we're in Cinebench R23, this still goes up to 87 degrees Celsius and is still pushing close to 90 watts. Now, I'll post the scores on the Wraith Stealth versus the Wraith Prism in Cinebench R23, but what we're gonna do right now is change back to the Wraith Stealth and find out what's going on in the BIOS and essentially why this CPU is going too hard on an A320 in particular and see if we can mitigate this by either undervolting it or lowering the clock speeds just a little bit. So before we get into the BIOS settings, I had to go back to my 2019 data and just cross-reference it with what I'm getting here today and seeing if basically these CPUs are being pushed harder in 2023 maybe due to a more aggressive BIOS or something like that. And the answer was no, they're pretty much coming in with the same temperatures as I recorded with the Wraith Stealth cooler back then as I'm getting now. So what's changed in that time, however, is something big. And this is what I then realized was when I was gaming back in 2019 with the Wraith Stealth and even on an A320, for example, the games weren't as optimized, nor were the GPUs as powerful. So basically fast forward to 2022 and 2023, you've now got GPUs out like even an RX 6600 that's faster than a GTX 1080 was. And you've got say the 6700 XT now and the RTX 3080s. These GPUs are gonna be pushing these CPUs in games, coupled with the fact that the games are generally getting more well optimized over time. 
those two combinations together means that this CPU is going to be running a lot hotter. And I think this is where the problem lies. If you've got a Ryzen 5 3600 and you're playing with say a RX 6700 XT or a higher end GPU in games, keep an eye on your temperatures because this may be an area where you need to change over your cooler to something that will keep this CPU a lot cooler or we can go into the BIOS right now and see if we can take those temperatures down even with the Wraith Stealth if you want to save on money. But also for those people out there that say, oh Brian, you're testing with an A320, they're absolute crap. Uh, we tested this motherboard in the Cinebench R23 scores and that, wasn't, that was staying under 70 degrees and then testing it in gaming, it was remaining under 60 degrees. So the A320 motherboard with a Ryzen 5 3600 is absolutely fine. So when we boot up our PC, we just press the delete, or if you don't have a delete key on your keyboard, you can press F2, and this will bring you into the BIOS. Now, we wanna to go to advanced mode in this case, which is F7 on our keyboard, and this is on an ASUS BIOS. So some of these BIOSes may look different. Now, the first thing that pretty, pretty much everyone does, and I'd say the majority of people do this, is they just lock in their XMP profiles. Here we've got 3200 megahertz CL16 memory, and we've already locked that in. And then we just leave everything else on auto. This is generally how I sell a gaming PC as well. If it's a Ryzen-based gaming uh, PC, it's gonna get you that good smooth performance and there's gonna be generally nothing wrong out of the box. But with this CPU running so hot, I wouldn't feel comfortable selling this in its state. And basically what we're gonna go into now is because we're on an A320, we just don't have the uh, I guess the manual clocking available that you would get on a B450 or a B550 motherboard, for example, or an X370 or something like that. So what we're doing here is basically we're looking at the worst case scenario. If you've got an A320, you don't have much tuning options. Can we take down these temperatures? And what we're gonna be looking at here is this precision boost overdrive setting. So this is the only thing I'm really looking at here. And also the performance bias We'll take that away because that could have been artificially inflating our numbers, but we're going to go into precision boost overdrive and we're going to disable this and then come back to uh, Cinebench R23 and see if that solves the problem of our CPU running too hot. And even in the BIOS here, it's going up to 63 degrees, but let's uh, go over here to the exit tab and click save changes and exit. You can usually hit F10 key as well. That usually is the hot key to save and reset. So we're gonna turn that performance bias off as well as that precision boost overdrive. So disabling precision boost overdrive on this PC did absolutely nothing. It's still running really close to that 95 degree limit there and it's still using close to 90 watts. So we're gonna go back into the BIOS and see if we can change a few more settings and we're gonna actually change a heap at one time just to see if we can change this behavior. Okay, so we are now back in the BIOS and we're gonna go over to this AI tweaker again. And I'm gonna go into this precision boost overdrive tab right here on the left by hitting enter on our keyboard. And we've already disabled now this precision boost overdrive settings, disabled. But we're gonna do the precision boost overdrive scalar. So we're gonna put this on 1x down from 2x. And we're also going to, um, max CPU boost clock override, zero megahertz. So we're gonna try those two and see if that changes any behavior. And then we'll come back into the BIOS and the last setting that we can do here, this is the absolute last setting, we can just place a thermal throttle limit on the CPU. But we'll see if these two settings have changed any of this behavior quickly. So changing those settings did absolutely nothing. Again, just like the original turning off precision boost overdrive did nothing too. So we're gonna have to go to this last resort here and just put a thermal throttle and hopefully that works. I mean, nothing's worked so far, but hopefully placing a thermal throttle on this CPU will fix our problem. So we've got some really good news. That 70 degree thermal limit was the solution here with the Wraith Stealth Cooler. We did peak over that, but that was only momentarily with the 
76 degrees here. So for most of the benchmark, it was staying at 70 degrees and the power was down from 90-ish watts down to around 51 watts. And also the speeds, although the speeds dropped from around 3.8 gigahertz to 3.45 gigahertz. However, the scores ultimately around 8,000. So we did lose about 10% performance overall in this Cinebench run. But ultimately, if we look at the temperatures, we've dropped massively there from 95 degrees down to 70 degrees. And so that's much bigger than 10%. And so basically, if you wanna stick on a race stealth cooler and you're playing games, I would definitely recommend dropping down your CPU down to a manual 70 degree limit here. But let's try one more thing, and that's to try and undervolt this CPU in the BIOS and see if we can raise this speed of this CPU up a little bit with that 70 degree limit on this A320 motherboard. And now with those undervolted settings tuned in, our CPU was running a bit faster with that manual 70 degree limit on both Cinebench. And then we went into games, it was running at 70 degrees capped. And this is much better than those 95 and over 90 degrees in Death Stranding temperatures that we got with out of the box settings. So basically what's happening is since 2019, I knew that the race stealth could get hot on a Ryzen 5 3600, it's just the majority of people would have been buying the Ryzen 5 3600 for gaming. And so now fast forward three and a half years later in 2023, we've now got people keeping the Ryzen 5 3600 because it's still a relevant CPU for gaming, but I'm guessing a lot of people are then keeping the race stealth cooler and upgrading their GPUs even to something like an RX 6600, RX 6700 XT. And when you couple those GPUs with the Ryzen 5 3600, it then starts to push it quite hard in these titles. For instance, Death Stranding is actually a pretty well CPU optimized game, and it was pushing all those cores and threads quite high. And so basically running this CPU at over 90 degrees in the long term is just a recipe for a failed Ryzen 5 3600. Now, I think today's data is going to apply as well to the Ryzen 5 5600, as well as uh, the Ryzen 5 1600 and 2600, these six core 12 thread CPUs, because the GPU in games is now gonna be uh, running higher FPS, that's gonna be putting more of a strain on these lower core count and threaded CPUs. And I guarantee you, if you look at the failure rates, the six cores would be failing more than the eight cores, and those would be failing more than the 12 cores. And then the 12 cores and 16 cores would actually probably have the lowest failure rates. So now it's time for the most important part of today's video, and that's the recommendation. And basically if you've got a Ryzen 5 3600 or a 5600 or any CPU for that matter, the best thing you can do is get a temperature monitor while you're playing games or using applications. And this is important because me personally, I never let my CPUs run in the long term over 80 degrees. For instance, if I'm doing heavy workloads in Adobe Premiere Pro, hitting around 80 degrees is fine. But if I'm gaming, I like to keep my CPU at 70 degrees or under, especially if you're gaming for long sessions. Gaming with 90 degrees or over is a recipe, as we said before in this video, for disaster. And that will end up giving your CPU a much shorter life than it can otherwise have. So basically, monitor your temperatures. If they're going over 70 degrees in games, Look at either two things, like we did here today, undervolting, and if you're on Ryzen, I've also got a full undervolting tutorial that can help you out, or, or and or, I should I say, get a better CPU cooler. Now, on a budget, my favorite CPU cooler is the Snowman. It drops temperatures considerably, and if you don't want to mess around in the BIOS with any settings, this will help you out quite a lot. Anyhow, guys, with all that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video and the information in it. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And also if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the videos as soon as they drop. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.